Hello everyone, I hope you're having a fantastic day. In this video, I'm going to show you 7 amazing builds that are known for being examples of raw power and for entirely breaking the game difficulty by destroying all bosses and enemies in just a few seconds. Keep in mind that all the background gameplay of this video was recorded on New Game Plus 7, which is the max scaling of Elden Ring, so you can expect a lot of more damage from each build if you are in a lower New Game cycle. At seventh place on the list, we have the Shura V2, an alternative version of my Shura build for those who wouldn't like to play with the Rivers of Blood. The main difference of this build with the original Shura is the stats distribution. As weird as it sounds, this one is a dexterity and faith build, while the original was mostly an arcane build. This way, we can use a lot of fire incantations, giving a complete different vibe to the build. Also, the fire damage from the Blood Flame Blade will scale from Faith, not from Arcane as it was with the original build. As you can imagine, I always prioritize the close range combat performance, and even though the Nagakiba doesn't have a projectile part like the Rivers of Blood, the huge range of the Nagakiba can easily compensate that. Basically, both builds are pretty similar in terms of damage with a decent variation on playstyle, but I can tell you which one is the best, so give it a try and let me know in the comment section which Shura build is the best for you. We are going to be using the King Nagakiba on plus 25 with the double slash Ash of War and we need the Giant Seal to boost the power of our incantations and to cast our main buffs. I'm going to be using the white red set with the iron casa to keep the eastern style of the build. The most powerful talismans we can choose are the ritual sword talisman, the shard of alexander, the roaring winds or insignia and the lord of blood's exultation. Nevertheless, if you struggle to keep your hp bar full, the fire scorpion charm and the millicent's prosthesis are amazing alternatives for this setup. In our physic flask, the thorny crack tier and the flame shrouding crack tier will do the job incredibly good. And for some reason, this build doesn't consume stamina, it devours stamina, so be sure to craft some pickle turtle legs to boost your stamina regeneration speed. If you want, you can equip any weapon with seppuku and use it before any fight to have the benefits of the Lord of Blood's exultation as soon as the fight starts. But this step is completely optional since you will get that buff as soon as you apply bleed on your target. The stats we need for this one are Forion Vigor and Endurance and we need to level up Dexterity to 80 and Fate to 60. Golden Bow, Hall of Shabriri and Blood Flame Blade will be our main buffs. And with this build we can use all the Fire Giant incantation. Before going to the next spot we have a quick message from today's video sponsor. MMOEXP is the best web service where you can easily acquire as much runes and items as you wish for an amazing price. Use my code CARLOSEN to get a 5% discount on your purchases. Thanks MMOEXP for sponsoring today's video. Now we have a very underrated weapon that is an absolute monster. I wasn't aware about the Envoy's Longhorn until you guys told me about it. And being honest with you, my jaw dropped multiple times with the amount of damage we can deal if we use an optimal build with this weapon. Bubble Shower, the unique skill of the Envoy's Longhorn, will hit enemies multiple times dealing a lot of stance damage and melting bosses HP bar so easy. However, the reason why it is in the 6th place of this list is cause it will only show its true potential against large and slow enemies. It will be decent in most scenarios, but the main power of this weapon will be seen mainly against big enemies. Anyways, this bad boy is definitely broken despite of being a holy damage weapon and it is extremely fun to play as well. For this one, we need the Envoy's Longhorn on plus 10 and any seal we have available to cast our main buffs. The Envoy Crown will boost the power of our skill and I will use the Green Rod set to have enough poise. The best talismans for this build are the Rich Ritual Sword Talisman, the Shard of Alexander, the Sacred Scorpion Charm and the Dragon Crest Grey Shield. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic, we are going to be using the Stone Barb Crack Tier and the Holy Shrouding Crack Tier. To get the max power of this build, we need Forion Vigor, 35 on Endurance, we will level up Strength to 60 and Faith all the way up to 89. Golden Vow and Hall of Shabriri will be our main buffs. Moving into the top 5, the Dual Hawk Blade takes place. Everyone complains about the Jump Power Stance builds, but I couldn't care less about it. So here we have what is probably the best Bleed build for New Game Plus 7. I know Dual curved swords are great, but twin blades have a way better AR and the bleed build up is so fast as well. And the best twin blades for the job are definitely the gargoyles twin blades. I will describe this build as the definitive Elden Ring easy mode. And if you like to see those HP bars draining in seconds, this crazy combo is perfect for you. We need two plus 25 gargoyles twin blades with a crack blade as war in the blood affinity. And to cast the main buffs of the build, any seal is good. I will use the white mask and the raptor's black feathers to boost my attack power with the bleed procs and jump attacks respectively. And the rest of the armor is up to you. The most powerful talismans for this one are the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Lord of Blood's Exultation, the Roaring Winds or Insignia and the Claw Talisman. If you can't keep your HP bar full, the Millicent's Prosthesis stacks very well with this composition as well. In the Physic Flask, the Thorny Crack Tear and the Strength Not Crystal Tear will be highly effective. With this build, we are only dealing physical damage, so the best body buff we can use is Blood Boil Aromatic. But if you don't like to craft, do not even worry, cause Howl of Shabriri works very good as well. The most optimal stats for this baby are Forion Vigor, 35 on Endurance, we are going to level up Strength to 70, Faith to 33 and Arcane to 60. Golden Vow and Hall of Shabriri are going to be your main buffs 
again. Now we have one of my favorite builds of the entire game. The Moonlight Samurai is a magic based katana build that combines a fast paced combat with one of the most broken damage types of Elden Ring and it also has innate bleed build up. The Moon Veil is a very special katana. It's not the one with the largest range and it's not the one with the best bleed build up but it's definitely one of the most powerful weapons you can carry all the way up to New Plus 7 and it will still be extremely broken. Its unique skill, Trancing Moonlight, is a magic version of the Unsheed Ash of War but it deals more damage, it has more range and it breaks enemies' stances so fast and the most important, it looks freaking awesome. The Moon Veil must be upgraded to plus 10. We need any staff to cast our spells but the Asur's Glintstone staff will do the job faster and with any seal we will be able to cast our main buffs. We are going to be using the Spellblade set cause it will boost our damage by a total of 8% if we wear all pieces. The greatest talismans for this build are the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Shard of Alexander, the Magic Scorpion Charm and the Roaring Winds or Insignia. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic we are going to use the Magic Shrouding Crack Tear and the Thorny Crack Tear. However, the Stonebarb Crack Tear goes very well with this build too. For max damage and comfortable gameplay we need to level up Vigor to 40 and Endurance to 35. We will take Dexterity up to 70, Intelligence to 60 and Faith to 33. Golden Bow and Hall of Shabriri are going to be your main buffs and we will use Terra Magica to boost our magic damage by a lot. We have reached the top 3 builds of this video and I'd like to thank you all for your recent support on all my videos. You are amazing guys. Anyways, I kindly ask you to not forget to drop a like and leave a comment on the video. This way YouTube will promote my work to more people and I will be able to keep creating content. Once again, thank you. In third place we have the Lightning Hero, a powerful warrior based on lightning damage. The main weapon of this build is the Bolt of Ransax, a very amazing spear that I personally consider as one of my favorite weapons for a very good reason. The unique skill of the Bolt of Ransax is the lightning projectile with the best range and speed of the entire game. It's so fast that even the enemies that dodge sideways will take the hit regardless of their evasive maneuvers. The projectile will deal only lightning damage, however, it will not scale at all with fate. The damage of this skill will scale only from the weapon upgrade and from dexterity. For some reason, any skill related with projectiles will have a better scaling with dexterity despite of scaling with other stats as well. We are going to use the Bolt of Grand Saxon plus 10 and any skill we have available to cast or buffs. The armor I am using is not optimal for New Game plus 7, so feel free to choose any other you want. But if you like the drips, I am using the Gold Mask Rax, the Queen's Bracelets, the Old Sorcerer's Leg Wraps and the Commoner's Headband on its altered version. The best talismans for this build are the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Shard of Alexander, the Lightning Scorpion Charm and the Godfrey Icon. In our Physic Flask, we are going to use the Lightning Shrouding Crack Tear and the Green Spill Crystal Tear. This weapon consumes a lot of stamina, so crafting some Pickle Turtle Necks is definitely not a bad idea. To get the true potential of this weapon, we need Vigor and Endurance on 40, we will level up Dexterity to 99 and Faith to 33. Golden Bow and Hall of Shabriri are going to be your main buffs. Moving into the second place, we have, which is in my opinion, the best weapon of the game. It is not my favorite, but leaving personal preference aside, it is the best. It deals a tremendous amount of damage, it looks amazing and it allows for an aggressive gameplay rewarded with healing on hit when using the skill Taker's Flame and healing on each enemy killed just by having the weapon equipped. The Burning Warrior is a fate based build which makes it perfect to combine a lot of incantations with it. However, I decided to keep it simple and enjoy the Blastomous Blade as much as possible. The only counterpart of this weapon will be that it depends a lot on fire damage, so fighting enemies that are extremely resistant to this type of damage can be a little bit complicated, but not that much since you will be healing each time you use the skill. So what are you waiting to try this crazy monster? We need the Blasphemous Blade on plus 10 and any seal we have available to cast or buffs. The armor set is up to you, but the Drake Knight set with the Knight Helm is incredibly stylish. The most powerful talismans for this one are the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Shard of Alexander, the Fire Scorpion Charm and the Old Lord's Talisman. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic we are going to be using the Flame Shouting Crack Tear and the Stone Barb Crack Tear, but feel free to choose any other you find useful, as long as you have the Fire one. The best stats for this build will be Forion Vigor and Endurance, we will level up Strength to 60 and Faith to 80. Golden Bow and Hall of Shabriri are going to be your main buffs. And the winner of this top can't be other but the Psycho Fighter, a build inspired on my Blight Tyson Fist build. Plenty of you guys roasted me cause I stayed in the Iron Balls video that they were the best fist weapon I had tried, but it was true, in that specific moment I wasn't aware about the Star Fist. Now I understand why you guys were so upset with me cause it is true, the Star's fists are better than the Iron Balls. The difference is not very important, but the difference can be seen. The AR of the Star Fist is higher and these bad boys have innate bleed build up, so if the Iron Balls were powerful, this weapon is unexplainable better. The only thing that I don't like is that you have to decide if you prioritize the bleed build up or the base damage. So I decided to go with the base damage and have the innate bleed just as an extra feature. For this build we need the Star Fist on plus 25 with the Crack Blade Ash of War on the Heavy Affinity and any seal we have in our inventory to cast or buffs. You can choose any armor set you find useful but I use the Rotten Duel set and the Black Wolf Mask. The best talismans to shred with this build are the Ritual Sword Talisman, the Millicent's Prosthesis, the Roaring Windsor Insignia and the Axe Talisman. In our Flask of Wondrous Physic we will use the 
Spike Crack Tear and the Thorny Crack Tear. This weapon deals physical damage only, so Blood Bowl Aromatic will be the best body buff for this one. But as you know, Howl of Shabriri will do it just fine. In order to get the max performance of this build, we need to level up Vigor and Endurance to 50, Strength to 99 and Faith to 33. Golden Bow and Howl of Shabriri will be your main buffs. Let me know in the comment section what do you think of these builds. I hope you have enjoyed this video, if you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day guys, my name is Carlos and I'll see you in the next one.